Welcome to Christian Answers. This is Jeff Short. Glad to have you along for the journey today. We're going to be tackling a topic that a few people have heard about. Um, I'm not sure if most Christians know anything about this. I'm not sure if most your average uh, Christian, average churchgoer, average uh, church member, not so many churchgoers today because of the lockdowns and the restrictions on church attending, but uh, not so many of them know that there is a thing called the PPP, Payroll Protection Plan, and the government gives those out to small businesses and large businesses in the form of a low-interest loan that can be forgiven if they follow the guidelines of the plan. Well, what Christians don't know a lot of times is that their own church has received funds from the PPP, Payroll Protection Plan, the government has given their own church, in many cases, government funds to keep running, to keep paying for the employees, the payroll, the pastor, the staff. And some of these funds amount up to five to ten million dollars in the super big churches, the mega churches, uh, I know a local church around here uh, received between one and two million dollars from the government in the PPP or CARES Act, part of the CARES Act program. And so there is a lot of money flying here and there and everywhere. And I want to raise the question, though, is it a good idea for churches to receive the government money? Now, for a lot of people, the answer is a no-brainer. Of course, if it's free money and the government's giving it out, we need that because we're not getting our offerings and so forth the way they would normally come in. And so the answer is, of course, yes for many, many people. But I want to ask another question. Does it come with strings attached? And that's the real issue. So today what I want to do is I want to pull up an article that was in Christianity Today. And that's the magazine, the once uh, very popular magazine, Christianity Today. Not so much as much today as it used to be, but I want to talk about um, how it lists a couple of reasons why it may not be the greatest idea to uh, have churches join the payment payroll protection plan may not be the greatest thing in the world. And let's bring that up and let's go through that article because it's very, very, very interesting in how this is laid out. Uh, the article starts out, how megachurches spent coronavirus relief funds. So now we know how they spent the funds because we have the Freedom of Disclosure Act that the U.S. government has put out on this. And so any church member can look up in their state if their church received any PPP funding. And I, I think a lot of people will be shocked to find out that almost uh, all the churches have received some kind of PPP funding. And the amounts vary depending on how many people they have working at the church. But these large megachurch, they have been receiving quite a bit. So Christianity Today says... Um, Religious groups got $7.3 billion in forgivable loans. The financial security helped ministry teams focus. And so this article is going to try to be a balanced article about uh, the pros and cons of receiving government money. And we're going to talk about some of the voices that are very popular voices saying, no, don't take the money, don't take the money, you'll be sorry. But uh, that needs to be seen. We, we're not, most churches and most pastors and most denomination and most Christian ministries have not taken that negative skeptical attitude. They've taken the attitude, well, um, it's a good opportunity. We're going to need that money. Offerings and collections and funding is down, so let's take it. What do we have to lose? If it's a loan, it's a low interest loan, we'll have to pay that back, but hopefully we won't. And so they basically went ahead and did it. But let's read on. Mike Vaughn doesn't think churches should accept money from the government normally, 
But when the administrative pastor of Palm Valley Church in Goodyear, Arizona, looked at the looming economic crisis brought on by the coronavirus shutdowns, the staff jobs he was trying to save, and the way Congress structured the payroll protection plan, he used it by religious organizations. He felt different. So here's a pastor, not too keen on government help, but then he goes ahead and says, ah, it's a good deal. That program is a worthwhile exception to the general rule, Vaughn told Christianity Today. Palm Valley is one of more than 88,000 religious organizations that receive money from the Small Business Administration as part of the CARES Act, which President Donald Trump signed in March. The CARES Act gave $521 billion in PPP funds to small businesses, nonprofits, and churches between the beginning of April and the end of June. About $7.3 billion went to religious organizations, according to the government records. So a lot of Christians took a lot of money from the government during the coronavirus lockdown. And you know, the, the rationale is basically, and, and, and it's, the logic is pretty simple. Um, if the government tells you you can't meet If you have a small business, the government says you must shut down, you must stay home, well then, how are you going to make a living? So you have to have some income. The government then um, pays you to shut down. The same way with churches. If the government says you should not meet or cannot meet, uh, how are you going to take your offerings and then um, to receive funding in that crisis seems to be justified. But let's read on. Providing money to churches was unprecedented and controversial, even among evangelicals. Popular Christian financial advisor Dave Ramsey strongly discouraged churches from taking the money on his radio show, for example. And this video is up on the internet. It's up on YouTube. You can go to it. You can watch it. He's very adamant. Now, the thing about Dave Ramsey, why mention Dave Ramsey? Because Thousands of churches and pastors turn to Dame, Dave Ramsey for financial advice. A lot of the mega churches have his Financial Peace University operating within their church. And so all of their people uh, sign up for the Financial Peace University. He's always talking about don't go in debt, be responsible and everything. Here we have the voice of this leading evangelical financial advisor saying, don't do it. It's a triple don't do it for churches, Ramsey said. Here's why. You just let the federal government into the management of your organization. So he's worried about the strings attached. Now, is that justified worry? We'll see here. Chuck Bentley, CEO of Crown Financial Ministries, has a similar concern. And again, Crown is another respected voice in the financial advisory community among churches. I I remember um, about 15 years ago, uh, the church I was pastoring had a representative of Crown Financial Ministries come in and speak to the congregation on finances. So these are two really leading top voices about financial responsibility, and pastors and churches have been turning them to these organizations for decades, and these organizations are saying, don't take the money. Don't take the money. Is it really manna from heaven? It's manna from Caesar, that's for sure, he said. What's it going to look like in terms of the optics in the long term, that this is where the church went for rescue? Yeah, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of some of the Jews in exile. You know, when Cyrus uh, decreed that they could go back and rebuild. Um, it says in the Old Testament that they were ashamed to ask the king for a special security detail because they had been bragging on God and God would provide and God will uh, keep them safe. And so they didn't. And they traveled back to the uh, Holy Land safely, but they were worried because they didn't have a security detail from the king because they didn't want to go to the king because they, they were telling the king so much about how God would provide. Well, I think that's a little bit like what this financial advisor, Chuck Bentley, is saying from Crown Financial Ministries. He's saying, um, do you believe that God will su- provide your needs? 
and supply all your needs in a church, then why are you going for, to Caesar? Caesar's not your source. God is. And so, and so that's the whole. The, now, now Dave Ramsey goes into it uh, about ten minutes. I think uh, he has a couple segments on a couple of his shows, uh, about ten minutes each. So it comes out to about twenty or thirty minutes on e, uh, on this topic. And he his main concern was that it comes with strings. And his assistant was sitting there on the panel there, and Dave Ramsey, and said, well, this, this, this legislation, this CARES Act, is over 800 pages, and they say that nobody has really fully understood or gone through the whole thing, and we don't know the whole ramifications of it. It comes with qualifications. You get the money as a loan. You sign up for the money. The churches sh- sign up for, the, for it with the intent that it's a loan, and then if they fulfill the terms and conditions of the contract, the CARES uh, deal, then the loan is forgiven, so they don't have to pay it back. And a lot of people rush to the conclusion, well, this is free money. If it's free money, just no questions, no brainer, just sign sign me up. You know, and that's what a lot of churches have done. For example, in Plymouth, Michigan, the large uh, uh, Northridge Church of 10,000 people or so. They have three services, a Saturday and a two Sunday services. Large building, large campus. And they're totally shut down. They've been shut down now for five months. They have not had any kind of public worship for five months, only internet broadcasts online. And the Free Press, the Detroit Free Press, had just uh, reported that Northridge Church received between one and two million dollars from the government for this PPP, Payroll Protection Program. And so they are now having to fulfill all the requirements of this PPP terms and services or else they're going to have to pay that loan back. But it's it's low interest, it's 1% or so. So I think some of these churches and Christian organizations are saying, well, it's worth it to get that if it's, if it's a loan at only 1% because um, it's always good to have that cash on hand in case this coronavirus pandemic really turns ugly and we can pay our people, pay our payrolls and keep things going. And then if there is some kind of uh, manipulation or there's some change after the election and our political opponents or people hostile to the churches and Christianity come into power, the worst that could happen is we have to pay this back at 1% interest. So so I think a lot of the uh, Christian groups were saying, well, it's worth taking the risk trying to fulfill the obligations of the agreement and getting it forgiven, but if by some fine print detail we are not able to do that, well, we'll have to be able to pay it back at that low interest rate, and it still would be worth it. So I, I'm not sure what the conversation is was at Northridge. I know it's similar in other big mega churches like Willow Creek. They've received millions of dollars from the government. Saddleback Church... Now, it's interesting that Grace Community Church out in California, Pastor John MacArthur out there, who is now defying the government uh, of California and defying the uh, city government of Los Angeles in the county by meeting without face masks and social distancing and so forth. Um, (coughs) Excuse me. His situation was was interesting because evidently someone at the church, and I don't know if it was the lawyers over there or the administrators over there, they had applied for the PPP loan and had qualified and actually had received the funding in the bank, but then sent it back, immediately sent it back. I don't know the internal workings at Grace Community Church. I don't know if John MacArthur was fully informed about what was happening, or but they might have looked and read through the agreement. 
and decided that they didn't want to put their future in the hands of some government bureaucrat who might want to change the terms or, or some judge somewhere who might want to rule on the terms of, of service of this loan. And so I think Grace Community Church was wise in turning it down because <clears throat> I think what Dave Ramsey is talking about is very, very true, that there are strings attached to this money. And if even if the um, forgiveness part of this money actually occurs, in other words, if, for example, Northridge Church in Plymouth, Michigan, even if they actually have that one to two million dollars that they borrowed forgiven just as a grant, basically, free money, what are the consequences of having to work for the government and follow their guidelines and do and jump through their hoops? You know, the old saying is, uh, he who pays the piper picks the tune. So if you got the money and you're throwing it money at someone, uh, that person that you're throwing it at is pretty much beholden to you and they need to listen to you. And I'm wondering if we're seeing that happening with the way churches are responding to these local and city and state regulations on opening worship up. There are thousands and thousands of churches who, who do not have the doors of their church still opened after five months. And it could be because they're not wanting to do anything out of bounds that might disqualify them from getting these loans forgiven. And uh, I think John MacArthur out in California, he doesn't have to worry about that because he returned his uh, PPP funding, said, no, thanks, but no thanks, and they sent it back, which, is, uh, which was probably worth a uh, million or so dollars out there in his large church. So he, he decided after looking it over, I guess, that uh, he'd rather have the freedom to decide and do things the way the Lord would have him do things and his elders without worrying about and looking over their shoulder and asking the government, is this okay? Can we do this? Can we do that? Can we do that? And I think there is a real truth there. And this is why I think we're seeing a lot of church pastors being so compliant <clears throat> when they're being told, okay, you can't sing. <coughs> you can't sing. You can't... Um, you can't assemble together or over 25% of your building capacity. You can't do this. You can't do that. If you go out in California, city of Los Angeles, they have so many rules and regulations about churches. It's, it's very highly restrictive. It's, it's definitely a violation of the First Amendment. But you don't hear a lot of churches objecting to it. And I think the reason you don't is because they're kind of playing by the government's rules here because they've taken government money, and that would be a shame. Let's read on. Vaughn is sympathetic to that point of view. He also understands why those outside the church might be skeptical of religious organizations getting money from the federal government. But the PPP money came with guarantees that the government wouldn't interfere with the church's business, and it helped the church better to serve its community in a time of acute need, Vaughn said. Okay, whenever you hear the word, the government guarantees that the government wouldn't interfere. You better be worried. The guarantees, that's like a guarantee of religious freedom in the First Amendment. We have a written constitution. It says freedom of religion, and yet we are being regulated and being told that if you come within six feet of someone who might have the symptoms of COVID-19 that you have to self-isolate for 14 days and all kinds of red tape legalistic regulations. And um, when the government says they guarantee that they won't interfere, um, I guess that's the same sense in which they won't interfere with the First Amendment, right? Well, see where that's gone. 40% of Protestant churches in the United States, according to LifeWay Research, decided to apply for the forgivable loans. 40%. That's a lot. I think 
the smaller ones might have said, no, it's not even worth it. The non-denominational megachurch, which has about 5,000 people in two locations on a normal Sunday, received $400,000. That's not chicken scratch. That's big money, $400,000. From the government, the first thing Vaughn did when he got the news was tell his church's 24 full-time and 20 part-time staff members that their jobs were safe. Well, that's great. You could tell that there were a few folks that let out a sigh of relief, he said. We wanted to make sure that we didn't have people walking around nervous and worrying. Okay, well, a lot of people are walking around nervous and worrying too. There was just too much to do, and so we needed everybody headed. Everybody's head in the game. Okay. Well, that's nice. According to Vaughn's account, the church spent 93% of the money on payroll and an additional 7% went to rent and utilities. They can spend just a little bit on some other things, but the vast, vast majority has to go to actual uh, salaries. The PPP rules say loans will be converted to grants if 75% of the funds are used for payroll and the rest for specified needs, including rent. Okay, so they can 75 up to 70. 75% must be used on uh, payroll. The money helped with more than just paying the bills. However, I'm sure, you know, when you talk talk about what the money is used for, I'm sure the churches are putting it to good use. Palm uh, staff called every member to the church to check in every two weeks, praying for them, encouraging them, and listening to their needs. The church also organized a volunteer force to help with several projects, including providing care packages to area hospitals and serving a local food bank. I think we still would have done it without the PPP funds, Vaughn said, but we wouldn't have been, we would have been shorthanded. It would have been much heavier lift. That's what Dave Ramsey was saying. It's like most churches, they can do those things still without the government funding, but is it worth having the strings? So let's go on down here. With their full staff, the church could also better engage the national conversation about racism and policing after the deaths. Okay, so so they can talk about social justice issues, which is not what the church is for. And that's not the purpose of the church to spout out the last and the latest uh, trendy political causes, but that's what they did. We're learning how to be diverse congregations. If we had been short-staffed once that aspect of things came to the surface and we recognized we needed to lean into those things, it would have been really hard having the resources to be a full staff, I believe firmly embedded us to learn into racial justice. Okay, so they can get on board with all of the protesting and all of that. Other churches that receive PPP funds have similar stories. Sandals Church in Riverside, California received a loan between $1 million and $2 million, according to Executive Director Brian Shalett. The church has 236 people on staff and used the overwhelming majority of the PPP money for payroll. That's good, because that's part of the plan. If you don't do that, it's a loan. you got to pay it back. Despite four months of not meeting in person, the Southern Baptist multi-site megachurch with regular weekly attendance of 14,000 people at nine locations didn't have to lay off any staff because of that. Shalette said they were able to put a lot of energy in helping those in need. So basically talking about how they did a lot of good stuff. So there's no question that this money can be put to good use, but... The question is, is it worth having the government fund you and have some strings attached? And that's what Dave Ramsey was talking about. His fear is that later on down the road, when the bureaucrats get a hold of all of these Christian churches— And we don't know who will be administering this in the future, but there may be churches that are asked to pay back their loans. And so what they thought was free money, what they thought they were getting, 
as basically essentially a grant, and they're now ho get, having to pay it back. And so if they're a large enough church, that's okay because they can do that, and it's a low interest rate, a 1%. But if they're a moderate-sized church and they took this money out and they went ahead and spent it, and then they get notice from the government that they're going to have to pay it back because of some... Uh, red tape or some fine print that they didn't read or didn't do something. But we'll see what happens there. Uh, it could be that the churches actually do um, get these as grants, but they did have to play ball with the government. They did have to follow the guidelines. And I believe right now we are seeing, like I said before, we're seeing churches trying to be really good follow all the health guidelines. I noticed on the um, telecast the other day of Northridge Church in Plymouth that the pastor was talking about some activity at the church, and he said, of course, obviously, we're following all of the state health regulations. He wanted to make sure that everybody understood they're following all the state health regulations. And I think the reason why a lot of these mega churches are very, very careful to not in any way give the governments, whether state, federal, or county or city, any kind of pushback as far as regulations is that they've taken this money from the government. They've taken the funding. And so they don't want anything that could be used against them to say, well, this church isn't following the guidelines. They're not following the health guidelines. They're not following the plan of the CARES Act, the PPP. And so we're going to say, because you didn't follow us, you're going to have to pay this back as a loan. It's not a grant. I don't think the churches want that. They want this as a loan. I mean, they want this as a grant, excuse me. They don't want it as a loan. If they have to pay it back, then that means with interest, and then that complicates an already complicated situation because their finances are already down. And it doesn't, it's not clear how long it's going to take for churches, especially mega churches and medium sized churches, to get back up to speed financially after the coronavirus is over, if it's over soon. So, what they're doing now is they're being super cautious and not raising any objections to any of the cumbersome restrictions. Okay, state, you want us to stay locked down? Okay, we'll stay locked down. Whatever you say, governor, uh, whatever you say, mayor, we'll go along with you. And I think that string is muzzling churches from resisting this um, these policies that are really cumbersome. So we'll see uh, how this works out, but uh, I hope that's been a helpful information and something to think about, and we'll see you back next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless. Yeah.